Mr. Speaker, another good example of deliberate, well thought, well thought out policy executed through hard work and commitment that is generating dividends is what we've done about food and agriculture in the past three years. It bears repeating that agriculture was very much in the doldrums when we came into office with a growth rate of 2.9%. We introduced the program for planting for food and jobs and set about to make agriculture an attractive profession. We invested resources, expertise, and time, and the results have been impressive and rewarding. The growth rate in 2016 was 6.1%, and this increased to 6.4% last year. Increased production and higher yields of some foodstuffs like maize, rice, sorghum, groundnuts, soya bean, cowpea, cassava, and plantain have led to a decrease in the wholesale prices in market centers in major food producing areas. Furthermore, we're no longer importers of maize. We're reducing our dependence on rice imports and are now, in effect, net exporters of foodstuffs. Food prices are their lowest in decades. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, I must provide some examples of what I mean by things not just happening by happenstance, but by deliberate and meticulous planning and competent execution. We recruited some 2,700 agricultural extension agents to give practical expertise on the farms. We are not yet to the United Nations recommended ratio of one extension officer to 500 farmers, but we are working to, to get there. And it is definitely a vast improvement on the dissipated department we met on the assumption of office. With the support of Canada, 300 vehicles and 3,000 3, motor bicycles have been deployed around the country for ease of movement for those tasked to help the farmers. Once the foodstuffs are produced, we don't leave it to chance and risk not being able to sell and thereby discourage the farmers. The National Food and Buffer Stock Company, NAFCO, has been revitalized to enhance agricultural marketing and improve access to market. NAFCO is promoting institutional procurement of produce and sales to schools and hospitals. Mr. Speaker, I'm pleased to inform you that the Commodities Exchange in Ghana, which is fully operational, is promoting high productivity, price stability, increased exports, and reduced imports of commodities. Trading operations through an electronic trading platform commenced in November 2018. To increase storage capacity, 80 warehouses, each of a size of 1,000 metric tons, have been built around the country. 35 have been completed by the Ministry of Special Development Initiatives and 13 by the Ministry of Agriculture. The Minister of Agriculture will complete the remaining 17 soon, and the Special Development Initiative Ministry will complete another 10 by June. In other words, Mr. Speaker, every part of the value chain is planned and accounted for. The diversification of the scheme ensures that there will be something to interest a wide variety of people. That is, it is not only foodstuffs that are on offer, the planting for export and rural development per module promotes the following tree crops cashew, coffee, coconut, oil palm, mango, rubber, and shea. Parliament has con contributed to the process of agricultural transformation by the establishment of the Tree Crop Development Authority, which is going to be responsible for husbanding the industries of these tree crops into full maturity and expand by sevenfold our earnings from agriculture. The Rearing for Food and Jobs RFJ program is developing a competitive and more efficient livestock industry that will increase domestic meat production and reduce importation of livestock. 265 small earth dams have also been completed under the village One Village One Dam initiative. More will be done this year. 
At the heart of all these efforts is the determination to make agriculture an attractive business to young educated Ghanaians. And that is why modernization, mechanization, and the use of technology are all part of the scheme. The digital and internet maps of soil fertility status in the Northern Savannah Ecological Zone are being made available to facilitate informed decision making on fertilizer formulation and application. If any more proof were needed that under this government, agriculture is a high-tech undertaking, Mr. Speaker, an electronic platform has been established to capture and monitor the activities of participating farmers. As of December 2019, 500,000 farmers had been biometrically registered. <laughs>